Recife. Walking around this city and see how it exhales the past, the relation to nature and the people, the eye-to-eye -eye contact. Every look offers sparks of power and reminds me how art may offer other ways of retelling stories, reinvent narratives, and provoke new gazes on history. Architecture, construction, desire, pleasure, work, heat, smells, the carnival, a certain tropicalism, the joy, relaxation, the beach, love affairs, but also the struggle. How to make a living. How to deal with extreme inequality and fight the contradictions in daily basis. Apparently, it's a matter of now or never. I'm Jonathan Ziandrade. I'm an artist. I work with photography, video and installations. And I live in Recife, in the northeast of Brazil. Film Invited, Jonatas de Andrade, is part of the annual exhibition series Next Level. Uh, this series is aimed at presenting the work of artists who make radical new use of the medium of photography. In this solo exhibition called Staging Resistance, the Andrade investigates how photography can be a tool for playful activism and a catalyst of social change. The Andrade uses photography and video as vehicles for collaborative projects. He often works together with local communities in northeastern Brazil that experience social or economic exclusion. And by focusing on their stories, he amplifies the voices of people who are generally less heard in the public debate. Foam has long cherished the desire to host a solo exhibition of the Amrade. In 2013, he was selected as Foam Talent, and in 2019, his work, The Fish, was part of our traveling exhibition called On Earth. <laughs> it's complete. Just in it. <laughs> this is how you enter. And it's really cool. It looks like a book, almost. And we're very thrilled to be able to present his first major solo exhibition in Europe. Um, and for this show, Foam commissioned a new body of work which premieres here at the museum. The Northeast was the first region in Brazil to be colonized by the Portuguese. But Recife and Olinda were also part of a Dutch period of colonization during the 17th century. It was almost 30 years, but this memory isn't very much remembered in the daily life of the region. From 1630 to 1654, the northeastern region of Brazil was controlled by the Dutch Republic under the rule of Johan Maurits. And the port city of Recife was then called Mauritsstadt. Although this period plays a marginal role in the historic awareness of, well, most Dutch people, uh, the Andrade observed that the memory of so-called Dutch Brazil is still very active. For the commission at FOAM, I was intrigued on how to get back to these memories that seems to be erased by the tracks of colonization. I searched and I got to know that a group of women have been enacting for 30 years a curious episode of this period called the Battle of Tejucupap. In this episode, women led a battle that defeated the Dutch. A Batalha de Tejucupap ela aconteceu em 1646, no dia 24 de abril. Tem fotos de agora e tem muitas fotos também do passado, do começo, né? Veio um grupo de 600 holandeses e 200 índios. 
eles desembarcaram no porto. E quando o povo de Tejucupá chegou lá, eles já tinham desembarcado. E daí começou a luta. E quando foi já na manutenção do dia, o major apelou para as mulheres. Para que as mulheres fossem ajudar os filhos, os irmãos e o marido. The Dutch soldiers starving invaded the Tejucupapo village and women resisted using pepper, boiling water and domestic objects to defend their own territory. Ah, é. Segura aí a senhora também para tirar. <laughs> and I invited them to perform these to NSA and a photo shoot to my camera. Working in collaboration to me is fascinating because it creates an excuse of interaction with people that I wouldn't get so much close to. I think there is a light air in an adventure like this. My idea was to use photography in a way that I could play with the idea of tactics and strategy. Using arrows, using graphic design interventions, overlapping memories, transparent figures, almost like phantoms interacting. So this whole experience has two moments. One is the Battle of Tejucupapo itself, which are prints on cardboard, and they are structured fitting together in a huge wall, like a fortress, like a wall of battle. And surrounding this battle, we have the objects of those women. For me, it's like they're watching the battle. What started as an investigation of a, an uncomfortably shared past gradually transitioned into the question of how colonial power relations continue to resonate in the present. The actors are dressed in contemporary dress and they fight with everyday household appliances found around the house. Um, the walls of the museum dis display this kind of inventory or an armory of weapons that are used in the battle for their daily livelihoods. And so the installation transcends the historical and becomes a celebration of local resilience and women empowerment. We can see a little bit of the daily struggle of those women. É uma luta que continua. Hoje a gente não tem holandês para a gente lutar, mas a gente tem um invasor da fome, um invasor da miséria, um invasor da falta de medicamento. Esses são os holandeses de hoje. It's a battle of basic needs, for basic rights, for human rights, for guarantees against the pandemic. Everything that this government that we have now here in Brazil doesn't recognize, doesn't do. The Tejuco Papo battle speaks about those women and how their personal life and struggle inspire me and can also inspire the visitors, the audience of this museum, I hope.
when dealing with issues of inequality and of social exclusion, uh, there's this danger of becoming didactic and moralistic. And this risk is really intelligently avoided by introducing the element of play and performance in his work. The work ABC da Cana, Sugarcane ABC, show an alphabet made out of uh, sugarcane stalks that I propose to a group of workers who work in the fields of sugarcane to stop the work for a while and work in doing the letters. In this action, which is performative and collaborative through the excuse of photographing it. All the works in the exhibition are collaborative and performative in some sense and they all possess some kind of light-hearted civil disobedience that runs throughout the exhibition. In the project Fome de Resistência, Hunger for Resistance, I worked with a group of Kayapo women who keep alive the graphisms which are super traditional in their people. The Kayapo people use these graphisms drawing their body. I brought historical maps of their own territory. I proposed that they would use these maps as a sheet, a support only, and the graphisms would take over, almost like swiping away the drawing of the map. So it's a battle of drawings where, it, where the historical maps become a, a huge flag of, uh, of Kayapo people. What bounces out is the force, the power of their traditional drawing. In Jogos Dirigidos, directed games, I approached this amazing group of a deaf community in the countryside of Piauí, in the village of Vazia Queimada, and these people invented their own language, which is completely fantastic. The video is a little bit of them telling their personal stories and the, the video and the project trying to translate that to us, to the audience, who, like me, doesn't understand their codes, but they understand themselves and they communicate pretty well on that. Photography and film are not solely used to document or record these performances, but the camera rather functions as a kind of catalyst for participation and for activism. And the footage is often staged and loosely scripted, which makes the work hover somewhere between fact and fiction. The exhibition combines photography with other forms of visual communication such as uh, sign language, text, drawings, graphic design. Um, besides photographs, we may find fragments of maps, uh, typography and didactic tools that are used for educational purposes. My relation to photography started when I looked on books or magazines of daily life, of news, instruction manuals of machines. I would see how the advertising photography would play with the lettering, the size of the lettering in relation to photography, how black and white photography would give one sensation, how editorial news photography would give another sensation, how studio-like photography would play with light, would draw the objects in colorful backgrounds. All that for me was super inspiring because I understood that there are many types of photography and they could help me retell stories in a different way. He's interested in how language and other forms of visual communication may perpetuate social conventions and his work asks the question, uh, who is talking about whom? Who is part of the conversation and who is not? Uh, while at the same time asking which stories may have failed to reach us. 
With this working method, the Andrade points toward the fact that the stories we tell ourselves are selective and they're subject to curation. The writing of history is about editing, is about choosing a way, it's about taking one point of view. So for me, this is the field and the sort of a playground. <laughs>